A recent study published in the November-December 2016 edition of the journal Pain Physician documents the findings of researchers from Aswe University Hospital in Egypt comparing thermal radiofrequency to pulse radiofrequency in the treatment of chronic refractory plantar fasciitis. Plantar fasciitis is a common but painful condition affecting the heels. It often is the most symptomatic with the first steps taken in the morning. It usually presents with pain around the medial or inside aspects of the calcaneus, also known as the heel bone. Often there is tenderness along the soft tissue extending from the heel to the mid-arch or beyond. In 20 to 30 percent of patients, the problem occurs on both sides, bilaterally. There are many treatments for this condition. Usually, conservative treatment is successful. This may include rest while minimizing running and jumping activities until the condition resolves. Other conservative treatments such as physical therapy, shoe inserts, heel cups, and ice massage have been successfully used. When conservative options fail, medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may be helpful. Extracorporeal shockwave therapy may also help. For cases that are persistent, injection of corticosteroids may be the next reasonable step. For the small number of cases that fail to improve with the above conservative options, a surgical procedure called a plantar fasciotomy may be considered. The surgery may be performed either open or through an endoscope. Another option which has been used is radiofrequency lesioning of the nerve that provides sensory function to the plantar fascia. The name of this nerve is the medial calcaneal nerve. Traditionally, conventional radiofrequency lesioning involves heating up the tissue around the nerve until the nerve is lesioned or cauterized. This lesion prevents the pain signals from the plantar fascia from traveling back up the nerve and eventually being interpreted by the brain as pain. Thermal radiofrequency lesioning has been used for decades by interventional pain specialists to treat various sorts of musculoskeletal pain, such as pain from lumbar, cervical, and thoracic facet joints. It has also been used to treat sacroiliac joint pain, and more recently, pain in the knees and hip joints. In recent years, there has been some research that has indicated that it may not be the heat lesion that is responsible for the majority of pain relief. Instead, it may be the electric field that interferes with the nerve function at the cellular and subcellular level. Using this information, a newer technique called pulse radiofrequency has been used. Pulse radio frequency is a non-destructive or minimally destructive treatment that does not heat the tissue up as high as conventional radio frequency and gives the tissue a chance to cool down slightly between pulses of heat. The advantages of this technique include decreased risk of prolonged neuritis, decreased risk of neuroma formation, and usually a decreased period of increased pain following the procedure. Obviously, if the pulse radiofrequency treatment is able to give equivalent results as the conventional radiofrequency treatment with greater safety and shorter recovery time, this could be preferable in many patients. In a recent study published in Pain Physician, researchers from the Orthopedic Clinic and Rehabilitation Clinic of Ashwit University Hospital in Egypt performed a prospective, non-randomized, comparative study between these two treatment methods. In this study, 20 patients with bilateral plantar fasciitis for more than six months were treated with both pulsed radiofrequency and conventional radiofrequency.
For each patient, one symptomatic heel received one type of treatment and the other received the alternate type of treatment. In essence, each patient served as their own control group. This study reveals several interesting findings between the two methods. Generally, it is assumed that conventional radiofrequency treatment, while having significantly more discomfort for a few weeks following the treatment, should last significantly longer than pulsed radiofrequency treatment. However, in this study, both treatment methods resulted in very similar pain relief at 24 weeks. What was different, however, is that the pulsed radiofrequency group had significantly greater comfort at the one and three week marks. Overall, effective analgesia was achieved in both groups. However, the patients had significantly better pain scale and satisfaction scores in the pulse radio frequency group in the first and third weeks. These findings were highly statistically significant with p-values of less than 0.001. Prior to treatment, the numerical verbal rating scale upon waking NVRS scores for both groups were 8.7 out of 10. At the 24-week mark, the NVRS scores for both groups were below 2 out of 10. While there was a very slightly lower score for the conventional radio frequency at the 24-week mark, the results were not statistically significant. At the 24-week mark, the NVRS score for conventional radio frequency was 1.9 out of 10, and a score for the pulsed radio frequency group was 2.05 out of 10. Similar minimal differences were seen with prolonged walking scores of 1.80 out of 10 and 1.85 out of 10, respectively. The patient satisfaction scores improved from 2.35 at the start of the study to 8.4 at the 24-week mark in the pulse radio frequency group and from 2.45 to 8.45 in the conventional thermal radio frequency group. The authors concluded that PRF to the medial calcaneal nerve is a safe and effective method for treatment of chronic plantar fasciitis pain. The onset of effective analgesia can be achieved more rapidly with PRF compared to TRF on the same nerve. Further, randomized trials are needed to confirm the therapeutic effect and optimizing the dose of radiofrequency needed.